Today is gonna be things you didn't know were in Photoshop. We're going to select subject. We're going to duplicate that subject onto her own layer. Take the background, turn off the one I made a copy of. I'm now gonna go to the background and select subject again. And I'm gonna remove her from the background. So let's go to eyedropper, get that color that she's in. We're just gonna patch out some of the stuff that looks weird. I got her out of the background, which is the main goal. The history brush is like undo on a brush. Next up, Puppet Warp. Edit menu, come down to Puppet Warp, and that will put a mesh on the layer that you have selected. Put in points that where you want to be able to bend that subject. The whole point for this was that I can now bend that leg. I could also go in, put one there, and put one here, and maybe bend that foot down a bit. So just Puppet Warp for when you need to bend a subject. What I wanna do is switch my workspace over to a mode that would let me edit this like a video. If I go to my workspaces here, it's called motion. When I click motion, that brings up the timeline. Now the timeline is just there by default. It will show me the timeline for the various elements. The layers become tracks inside your video. And you can also even add an audio track. So I can twirl down the layers and I get transform opacity and style. I'm at the beginning of time. And again, if I move the playhead, nothing happens because I haven't done anything over time. Transform, add a keyframe. Now that I've got these in place, I'm going to move these objects off the scene. And then I'm gonna go to this one and move it off the scene. But at one second, I want them to appear. Move it over and I can even move the playhead a little bit over so the other one comes in a little bit behind it and then move that one over. If I go back in time and hit play, hit the space bar, they move into time. But you've basically done a video edit just like that. And once you're done with your video, you would go up to your file menu, choose export and choose render video. That will come over a dialog box that tells it, you know, where you're gonna put the video and what quality it's gonna be and so forth and so on. HDR toning. If you've ever taken a photo of someone standing next to a window and it's bright outside, High dynamic range allows you to take two shots, one of the window that looks good, one of the person that looks good, and then combine them together so you get one single image that the window looks good and the person looks good. Image menu, under adjustments, HDR toning. It will create an HDR look based on whatever presets or whatever settings you give it. This was before and this is after. And they're presets. They are here like saturated, city twilight, the frame tool is more of a design tool for Photoshop, but definitely useful for anyone that could create just composite. And as you can see at the very top, when I choose the frame tool, use elliptical frames or a rectangular frame, I can then drop an image into that frame. It still creates a layer and basically creates a vector mask right off the bat for you. So convert it to a smart object first, then that gives you the best of both worlds because you can always drill back into the smart object and access the frame or use the smart object for the effects. For example, if I also add stroke to this, that's it, that's the trick. So convert it to a smart object first, then you can go effect crazy. Contact sheet, I'm gonna go to my file menu and choose automate, contact sheet, pick your source. You can choose a folder of images and I've done this, I've already picked one of my Australia photos. Next, you now determine all the parameters of your contact sheet. What size is it? How do you want the images to place? Across and then down or down and then across? How many columns you want? You can also choose what's going to be a caption and what font it's going to be in. Rotate for best fit. You can choose or not or keep them straight up and down the way they were shot. And then once you say okay, it will generate that new document, that eight and a half by 11, and it will go through each image in that folder. That's what we use contact sheet for. Cheers, everyone.